Hi, everyone. Welcome to Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades. I'm Matt Connerton, and this is, of course, the Honorable Gary S. Hopper, New Hampshire State Representative. Matt! Top hey. of the afternoon to your brother. Is it the top of the, af top top of the afternoon? Top of the afternoon, whatever the hell it is. It's kind of evening. It's like 6 o'clock. Yeah. Okay, top of the evening to you, then. Uh, that sounds much better. The rest of the evening to myself. Otherwise, I'm going to be all confused the rest of the day. I'm tonight, know tonight we have uh, uh, Phil Griazzo, who is uh, running for Senate. You are a state. Is this your first term as a state rep? Yes. Okay. I wasn't positive. I meant to look it up on, online before uh, the show, but I couldn't remember. And you're an alderman. Second term alderman. Second term alderman. And you can run for Senate against uh, the Louie. Well, I'm not running against anyone. I'm running for Senate. There's other people involved, and good luck to them. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> but anyway, so Matt, we we talked last week about it. I think it was last week. We I had an invention quite a while ago. Yes. And we have all kinds of inventions. Yeah, because you know, I I think a lot of people have spent a lot of time with their. Uh, in their cars and they just sit, sit at stop lights and you're just burning up gas and so one thing to do when you're trying to come up with the most efficient form of transportation is to try to eliminate friction. Mm -hmm. Friction is one of the greatest uh, adversaries of good economy so mm -hmm. one of as a uh, uh, kind of an amateur uh, ballistician I know a little bit about uh, wind, uh, wind uh, resistance and such. Yes. And so anyway, I realized that if you look at nature, because a lot of times what I do is I look at nature for stuff. If you look at nature, one of the most aerodynamic creatures there there is is mm -hmm. a rodent. Yes, yes. They are really, because yes. you look at the air, as the air flows by, it goes around the nose and then the back end is kind of rounded, so there's not that vacuum. Mm -hmm. You look at it like on the uh, the 18 wheelers; they get the flat back. Right. That creates a huge vacuum and slows them down and impedes their progress. So they it must be designed like a like, like a, rodent. a rodent. Yes. So I use that, and the other thing, the other thing that uh, causes problems is just traffic itself. Mm -hmm. So you get above the traffic, and I, so I invented um, a, a new form of transportation. If I can get that up on the screen, I'll show you right there. Oh, <laughs> it's a jujigible. Yes. Yes, it uses the aerodynamics of the rodent. Mm -hmm. of, of a gerbil. Of a gerbil, in this case, right. Yes. So that's that's my newest invention. That, that's great. I know. It's, I should get that. That's another way I'm probably going to get to be a millionaire. Are you yes. Gonna, are you going to fill yes. it with helium? Because I hear there's a helium shortage. Is there? No, we're going to use. Terrible. What, no, wait, wait. What did the Germans use? Because they couldn't. Have, they couldn't get hydrogen. Helium. Hydrogen. We're gonna do yeah. hydrogen. Yeah. That, always, that didn't that turn out too well, well for them. No, I know, oh, right. I know, but it'll be more exciting. <laughs> well, that's true. It'll be a lot more exciting. The morning commute. You don't know who's gonna blow up on the way to work. You could make a reality show out of that. Yes, you could. Who's gonna blow up in the? Jurgible. Jurgible. Happy birthday, Jurgible. Okay, Mr. Like one of my guests is Mr. Damon Hass. He's my favorite eldest grandson. But he's going to move right now because we got a young lady to come on for. I asked her to come on for about five minutes to talk about. Um, she's got a busy, busy schedule, and it's uh, Walk for Life is uh, May fifth is Walk for Life this weekend in Manchester. So I want you to come on just for a couple minutes and introduce yourself and do your sales pitch. Hi, Gary. I'm Bronda Butt. Um, I'm the executive director at the Manchester Crisis Pregnancy Center. Which is just around wait, wait, the corner what? from here. Technical difficulties. He's got technical. Huh? Oh, he's just, he needs to know who's coming on for guests, right, so he's prepared. Oh, all. sorry. <laughs> she has her own camera, see? So. <laughs> oh, oh okay, sorry. What do I do now? <laughs> now, yeah, yeah. Take, you take go, two. Go, go back, take two. Take two, take okay. two yeah. Hi. I'm Bronda Butt. Where should I look? Right there. Sorry, right there. Yeah. Hi, I'm Bronda Butt from the CareNet Pregnancy Center in Manchester, and we have a walkathon on Saturday. And Gary wanted um, everybody to know about it in case you'd like to come and enjoy the the fellowship and festivities, or get sponsors and um, and promote and help fund the CareNet Pregnancy Center. And what does CareNet? Some people might not be aware. What do you do at CareNet Pregnancy um, Center? Well, we've been there for about 28 years, and we serve women who are in what, what we like to call crisis pregnancies. 
Um, they may not know exactly what they want to do or how they're going to cope with this development in their lives and we are there to help them with um, options counsel. We have um, free pregnancy testing. We have limited obstetrical ultrasound. We have parent mentoring classes, mm -hmm. um, clothing, furnishings, whatever a woman might need, and her baby. And that's all tax, no taxpayer involvement at all? Not at all. No, it's all funded by things like our walkathon. Um, individuals, organizations, churches, businesses support us. It's yeah, I know our no church does. Money. We get we get those. Is, is that the one we get those little bottles? Yes, the baby bottle. The baby benefit. bottles that's you see another, around That's town? another event. That's another event. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, as Republicans, we definitely like to see the private sector doing stuff, so the state's not doing it. Yeah. So, like an actual charity. Yeah. Like an actual it charity, uh, yeah. as, opposed, as opposed to extortion. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I wish I, I wish I had a statistic on that because the care net centers that are all over the nation probably do a um, hundred million dollars worth of business um, or have in recent years, and I I don't have the stats, so I can't give my word for that. But um, it's really pretty amazing how much the Body of Christ is doing yeah. in that area. Yeah, yeah, because we get um, um now I'm going to Kurt uh, Wepler from yes. Uh, uh, Right to life. Right to life. New He's been on the show a couple of times talking yeah. about it. And I want you back sometime okay. to uh, uh, with uh, Diane because she was a guest uh, oh. was about two months ago. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, I just wanted you to have that opportunity before the yeah. walkathon. You have one. You have it on, on Nashua on the 12th. Yes. And t uh, this uh, Saturday, Saturday. And yeah. it, the uh, walkathon is at um, Mor Memorial Park. Veterans Park. Veterans, that's what I meant. Oh, I hope it doesn't say Memorial. Uh, Veterans, Veterans Memorial, Memorial Park. Memorial Park. Yeah. I, I got bad eyes, so I got caught yeah. half that. <coughs> and uh, registration's at 9.30, the walkathon's at 10.15, and I'm sure there's yeah. other stuff going on. And yeah. please come on and help yeah. a, a worthy cause, folks. If, s if someone wants to get sponsors, they can go to our website and actually get this form, download yeah. this form. And the website is www.thefriendsoflife.org. Thank you. Thank you. thank you for coming. I'm yeah. sorry to, I know you got a busy week That's getting all right. getting all ready for this yes. weekend. So thank you for having me. You're welcome. Okay. Have a good day, young lady. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> oh, can come back. You can come back now. Okay. <laughs> you can come back. <laughs> he didn't want to go to Scouts tonight. He wanted to come hang around with grandfather. Really? Yeah. That's that's nice. It's kind of sad that he actually wants me to hang out with me because I'm kind of. Boring. Are you? Yeah. Well, you took him to Subway, though. Yeah, yeah you did take him. Honorable. Shh. <laughs> all right, all right. That's We're not going there. <laughs> Jerk. Anyway, Phil. Yes. Back to you. So why? No. What? What made you? What motivated you to get into office to begin with? My neighborhood. Um, Living in Morehead for about 14 years now. When I got involved, there wasn't really a lot happening in my neighborhood, and I thought that uh, that needed to change. As far as what? Sidewalks constituent services basically you know people in the neighborhood were always complaining that things weren't getting done mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. trees were overgrowing the sidewalks uh, the, the the folks that are handicapped couldn't get around mm -hmm. um, snow plowing just you know regular regular issues and just being involved in my neighborhood it just kind of evolved from there okay yeah and so go ahead. I was just gonna say Norm gives you a lot of credit for uh, when he called you um, he said you're the you're the only one who actually called him back and, and did something to help him yeah, that's the job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's those are the things that were that were missing. So yeah, um, I was frustrated by it, as were many of my neighbors, and we got together and took the neighborhood. Yeah, that's awesome. You took over the neighborhood. Well, so like, like a revolution. Taking care of the neighborhood, we're making improvements wherever we can. Yeah, fixing up blighted areas, mm -hmm. getting things cleaned up, doing cleanups, stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. community involvement. That's all that's, it is. That's good. And so that 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 uh, inclined you to run for what first? Alderman. Alderman. How'd you like that? Uh, what? Uh, that's a lot of work. Mm. So it's you know you've been involved in politics for a while. It's all it's all a lot of uh, time to spend and thought to be given and consideration and interaction with people and finding out what they need and what 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 you need to do to represent them because that's what the job is. You know. Yeah. I don't I don't go there with my own thoughts and ideas and say well this is what we're gonna do. I go and I, I take with me what the folks in the neighborhood would like to see done, and that's that's the way that I vote. Yeah. Now, what wards are that? Uh, that? Uh, ward 10. Ward West, 10. West Manchester. West Manchester. Okay. Is that uh, near CMC? 
Uh, that's in Ward 11, a little bit, little bit south of that. Uh, Ward 10 is Granite Street south to Bedford, and the okay. river to Goffstown. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And okay. the Senate District is all of Goffstown, wards 10, 11, 3, and 4. Oh, okay. Where's 3 and 4? Uh, right now we're in Ward 3, and Ward 4 is uh, a little bit east of us. Okay. So that's a huge district. Yeah. For Senate District, it's 53,000 people, I believe. Right. That's what the right, Senate right. districts are supposed to be. So. So that's what you're running for now? Senate, yeah. District 20. Now, you, you, uh, when do you have to sign up? On June? In June. First, uh, first couple weeks of June. First couple of weeks. By the end of the second week is the, the deadline. So. Now, what, what is your, uh, you've been in the House for a term, so you're kind of getting your feet wet and understanding how. Uh, I got my feet wet the first day. <laughs> Literally or figured. <laughs> well, you, you were there. That's, uh -oh, that's oh, I'm sensing a story. Yeah, I've forgotten already. Oh, let's that, see, that, let's, that let's was hear it. that was when we challenged uh, <laughs> Representative Brunel's uh, qualifications to serve as a House member and being paid by a political party. Oh, oh, yeah. I actually kind of ignored that one. That seemed just political. It was. That's what politics is all about. Right. But the issue is that. If you're being paid to be involved in politics 24 hours a day, and you're right. you're a House member, and you have control over your caucus, that's a little bit uh, undue influence to be able to say, you know what, you're going to vote this way, or we're going to work against you in the election, or right. we're not going to give you funding right. in what, the election. So, with that? like I said, I wasn't um, paying attention. He, he he challenged it. It went it went through the it went through the process. Uh, legislative um, the legislative ethics committee. Uh, no, no, it's not the legislative uh, legislative. Uh, What's the leg legislative committee? So that was the ethics committee. No, it wasn't the ethics committee. It was a committee on le legislative administration. Administration, legislative administration. That's what it is. And uh, they they were looking at all the data and the information. And I I know for a fact that we could have had it happen, but I think uh, everybody got a little spooked that it would happen, and decided to look at it in a different way and give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh, really? And. Uh, so he's still there? No, actually. Oh. <laughs> he, he, he did exactly what I challenged it on. He went with the highest paying job, and he actually moved out of state for uh, a job to represent the unions in Philadelphia. Oh, no, oh, no so way. That just proved my point, that he right. was yeah. based on money, yeah, was, yeah. was where his loyalty lied, and that's why I brought the challenge. So. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And that was my first day. Wow. Take, first take, day. Take, <laughs> taking on their, their, uh, their floor leader. There, he was also the, uh, the deputy director of the state Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. um, so he was, used to be the Manchester City Chair. I thought that was a pretty good shot across the bow for the first day. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah that's, that's that's good. Somebody who doesn't is not afraid to make waves, which is a good no. thing. Yeah. Now you know, I'll, I'll tell you, if, if you're um, when you're elected to uh, Senate, one thing that has um, bothered me for years is people seem to once they they actually get to be senators their pretty much primary concern is how are they going to get reelected again I never worry about reelection and because of that there if you look at the uh, the roll calls com compared to if, like in the house there's a lot of roll calls yeah yes you know there's a, so lot. a ridiculous amount of re roll calls not i mean there's enough you, you have enough roll calls to find out how somebody stands on an issue, which is good. Right. But then they go over the top, and it gets almost ridiculous quantity of roll calls where... I agree. ...where you're roll calling not only the vote on the subject, but you're roll calling the amendment, and you're roll calling the uh, move, uh, decision to have it laid on the table. You're roll calling... The Everything. So to, so to clarify by roll call, you mean where you, so you know how each individual votes as opposed to a voice vote? Correct. A, a okay. voice vote, the, 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 everybody says yay or nay, and the speaker basically tries to judge. Okay. Who, who was the loudest. Who yeah. was the loudest. Well, who, who had the more, vo who had the most voices? Yeah, yeah. The most vocal. Yeah. Because sometimes that, it's funny, because they'll do a, uh, a, a voice vote, and somebody yells um, uh, division. A division vote just means any any one person can call that, and that just means you have to press your buttons, not yelling. Okay. But it doesn't record who you are specifically. It just records the number of people which pressed red or green. Oh, really? So you have a, an actual physical total to say 167 voted for and 200 voted against. Okay. But so, your name's not attached to it. But oh, the, interesting. But the, but the, uh, the uh, interesting thing is that when he calls roll call, 
I mean, call, calls for a vote and it's, people start screaming and somebody yells out division, often the, um, what sounds like a, uh, a vote's going to go for the yeas actually goes completely the opposite. Really? It's, it's a lot of times who's loudest. Yeah. yeah. So. And there are times where it's been in doubt that the speakers actually called for the division so that he can tell what the numbers really were. Right. Mm hmm or because it didn't go the way he wanted. And that he, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's still politics. Yeah. But so, so that was your first day. What, that was what that was the first day. Um, just working on the criminal justice committee. How do you like how do you like criminal justice? I really it's, haven't spent a lot of time in there. It's good. It's the committee that I requested because that has a lot to do with what makes us all criminals. That's criminal law, and you know, th those are the things that penalize you personally right. for punitive things that mm -hmm. either put you in prison and take away your freedoms and your liberties. And I think that's something that was uh, very important to me that I wanted to be a part of. Now, how'd you what'd you do on the um, uh, 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 Medical marijuana. I voted for it. For it. Yeah. New Hampshire used to have a medical marijuana law for 17 years. What I, was that? I didn't realize that. I didn't know most, that most people don't. It was oh. from 1981 to 1998. No kidding. Yeah. And it was str strictly for cancer patients, and there was no restriction. If you were a cancer patient and it was medically recognized by your doctor, they didn't prosecute you because that's the way that it should be. If your doctor tells you. Right. And right. for me, that's I what agree. the issue is. The issue is patients, doctor, um, rights. Mm -hmm. if, if somebody in your family is sick and dying, who cares what the name of the medication is? If the doctor says it's going to help save your life, you're going to do it. Right. Or you're, or, or you're going to help get your family member that medication because it's going to help them survive or at least enjoy the last few days of their life before they're gone. Right. The drugs that they give today, the morphine, uh, all those things, you know, you're incoherent and you're, you're unconscious and you're basically comatose on the couch mm -hmm. and then you pass away and you didn't get to spend that last bit of quality of life with your family. So mm -hmm. I th I think to me it's not about the, the name of the medication. It's, it's what the doctor recommends and the government shouldn't be involved in that. Yeah, yeah. I think the, I think what turned me on 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 that because uh, when I was first elected, I voted against it um, because when you're up in Concord, there, there's a lot of lobbyists, mm. and lobbyists are great, but you you take everything they say with a grain of salt. Certainly. Yeah. But what hit me was I, I kept running into people in my private life, like at work, that had cancer, and the doctors did recommend marijuana to help uh, regain appetite yep. mm -hmm. and um, and and so after you know there's only so many times you can get hit with reality like that that you have to yeah. say yeah well we don't really have a right to regulate that yeah or not regulate but uh, a right to tell people they can't so. right yep I, vo I voted with you on well, that Huh? And I, I thank you, and the, but, the cool. cancer patients and the people that are actually in need now of this. What, that, are, now, what did yeah. the, uh, the, the Senate did what to that? I think they, did the they Senate, pass it? It's actually a Senate bill. They passed okay. it, and they sent it over to us, and we passed it by an, a veto-proof majority, so now it's oh. up to the governor to okay, call Okay, so that's on bluff. the governor's desk now. It's, it's but, but going he's to a, the governor. But he's expected to veto it, isn't he? Correct. He said he was to. going to. You know, it's really, I'm sort of dumbfounded by that position because his wife's a doctor, uh, it's been to his desk before. It's got wide support by the folks in the, in the state. We voted for it past few times overwhelmingly, and he's still he's not running for re-election. So why would he veto it? Well, that's what I wonder. Why wouldn't he just not sign it if he disagrees? I mean, right? The, he's got nothing to lose. Exactly. So yeah, I, yeah I but really I think he's specific. Is that the one he specifically said he would veto? He said it to every single one of them. The last bill that made it to his desk, he basically wrote. He said, this is all the things I want to see in it to be able to be uh, acceptable to me. And then when it got to his desk, he vetoed it anyway. Wow. So I really don't know what his, what his, what his rationale is for it. But the, the you know, majority of the people of New Hampshire recognize that it's a patient's rights issue mm -hmm. and the government should not be involved in something that has to do with your medical treatment to save your life or you know, um, enhance your life just right. before you die. So. Yeah. What, what, uh, what other subjects did you want? Because I, I, I just that came on the top of my head. I'm sure that's not one of the huge subjects that's going to come up in the Senate. No. But what, it, what is some of the things you're going to be w wanting to work on when you do get to the Senate? Uh, business issues. I, we need to do a lot to bring manufacturing back to New Hampshire. We need to be uh, you know, more friendly as far as regulation goes. We've, we've got some issues here in the city of Manchester that just frustrate me. Um, and I want to see that fixed and changed and I don't think there's enough focus on on that um, from the current senator. I, I don't have a problem with gambling but that seems to be the only big issue um, for him and I, I disagree. It, it's, it's an issue but mm -hmm. it's not something that I would spend 
the most of my most of my time on it would be it would be business and uh, you what know, what specifically I would try to attract businesses here I think we're we moved up from last to 47th in a uh, uh, business friendly climate as far as national rankings go so we've got a long way to go to improve that the, the Manchester specifically or the, the, state? St the state of New Hampshire okay. yeah. uh, wow, that's troubling it, it is and I, it, a lot of it has to do with the business profit tax and the business enterprise tax all these things that have to you know do with with taxation of businesses we need to make it attractive for people to want to come here because then they're going to provide jobs and right. then the young people that graduate don't move out of state they go wow I can get a nice decent job here and, and live in this great state of ours and that's what we need to do yeah because I keep hearing people about, keep leaving I know I keep hearing about that how the young people they graduate high school or they graduate college and then they're out of here they're going elsewhere yeah yeah a lot of them go down to Massachusetts I suppose, uh, from what my understanding is yeah but there's a lot of jobs <coughs> down there they've got manufacturing and mm -hmm. you know so I think we need we need to create we definitely need to create a more business friendly environment and I, I and anytime I've seen an opportunity in Manchester to, to invite a business I I've done it, you know. Yeah. Um, the market basket that built down on Elm Street, I was trying to get them to come over to, to the west location because there was a, a, a grocery store that had gone out of business, and it's a perfect location. But they obviously were looking for something bigger, right? Um, and I'm glad that I'm glad that they came. Trader Joe's, I wanted them to come to Manchester, they didn't. They but they're coming to New Hampshire, so you know that's that's a step in the right direction. Bringing more businesses is is definitely going to Trader help Joe's our is pretty awesome too. It's a good company. And what got me involved in it is uh, my, my cousin's a store manager in Arizona, mm -hmm. and I talked to him, and he put me in touch with, with their uh, their real estate developer and their marketing consultants, and I tried to get them to come to Manchester because, you know, it's the largest city in the state, and I figured I'd be a good market for them, but they wanted to go to more mm -hmm. um, kitschy areas, you know, so yeah. I think they're going to Summersworth or the Portsmouth area, oh, okay. a little oh, bit, okay, a little okay. bit okay. more posh. Mm -hmm. than, than Manchester, so, yeah. you know, but they're coming, and that's, that's, that's... Is posh the new word for yuppie? I don't know. Yeah. Posh or, uh, metrosexual? Metro, yeah, same thing. <laughs> 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 oh, did you see, I, I posted online that, um, that, uh, uh, John Heichel paid me ten, ten, paid us ten bucks to... I saw that. I'll make sure not to drink the Kool-Aid. Well, we we we'll no, have some. It no. will it, it will it relax will not, you. Not a big fan of Kool Aid. It'll it'll it'll. Then we can sell you the antidote for twenty bucks. I don't drink the political Kool Aid. I we're just trying to make money here. I thought you were pro business. Yeah. We're just trying to make a, a little cash here. Jeez. Yeah, I don't think that's very. Well, it's not a very good product that you're offering. Why would I purchase cyanide? Oh yeah, because we can make money on it. Yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, nothing's perfect. You won't really get a whole lot of repeat business out of that business model there. No, no, yeah, no, no. We're hoping for referrals. Oh, that wouldn't work either. No, yeah. no. It's not the cyanide that we make. We make a little money on the cyanide. What we really make the money on is the antidote. Yes. Because people are highly motivated to, for the antidote. Yes. Yes, they would be. Then yeah. you have a captive audience. Yes, see, exactly. That's a good business model. See? Yes, yeah, see? Ah, he's coming around. He's coming around. He gets it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> So obviously you don't. He probably doesn't want us on yes. his advisory probably. council for business. But probably, anyway, probably not. So, so you want to work on business? How how are you going to uh, do the uh, reduce the business profits tax and things like that? Um, where are you, where, you know, in other words, if you're going to cut that, where are you planning on uh, beefing up some other form of taxation? Well, the more businesses or, we or get that make, cut. the more businesses that we can get that pay more taxes. We're making more money, so I mean that's so it's so it's 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 the idea of cutting taxes and we get more businesses and then the revenues go up. You incentivize it. I think the other day we passed the uh, the expansion of the research and development tax credit. Correct. Those are the things that you need to do to attract businesses that come in here that pay pay money in taxes and property and uh, they provide jobs to people that are paying taxes right. or buying goods and services and that's how you build the economy. You start strangling the economy by taking as much out of it as you can nobody wants to be involved in it it just gets harder and harder to right. to, to sustain so obviously the the way to go is to make it easier and more more free and open right, right. In the free market system so okay what what other things that your hot button issues well I I, I sponsored a, a bill for the death penalty that's sitting on the table currently I remember this yes and boy look at all the people that are being murdered lately it's what was it? What was your what was the death penalty bill? Uh, to make it applicable to everyone that committed a murder. Oh, oh, oh! And there well, was yeah, there we, we actually debated that on on on. Um, I 
forget how long ago. Go ahead. And there's also amendments sitting right there next to it to repeal it altogether. So I like that one. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I brought it forward, and I wanted to have the full debate on it, because I right. believe if you're going to have a death penalty, it needs to be applicable to anyone who commits a murder. If, the, if, you, if you murder somebody, you, you, you've basically given up your right to your own life. Mm -hmm. um, and having our death penalty selective for certain individuals is sort of discriminatory in my, in my view. And if somebody murdered a member of my family that I loved, I would want them to see the death penalty just as much as somebody who killed a police officer or you know, a sheriff or an elected official. I, I believe that my family member is just as important as those people. Right. I appreciate the service that they provide, but when you get to a family member or somebody in that capacity that is near and dear to you, you want justice. And that's what I believe in. So um, I would like to have the full debate that if we're going to have a death penalty, it needs to be equally applied. And if we can't agree to that, then we shouldn't have it at all. It saves our time and money. You kill somebody, you're in the cage, see you when it's time to put you back in the ground. Right. Hmm. Well, I, you, you voted against that the last time I came up, right? Against the, the death penalty? Last thing? term, I voted against the death penalty for a very strange reason. In fact, it was quoted in the... Uh, Hey, Damien, quit playing with that. Um, last, last, it was even quoted by uh, one of the uh, police officers in Manchester in the union leader. Because mm -hmm. he didn't understand my response. Mm -hmm. And it was on the wake of we were doing the bathroom bill. Last term, you remember the bathroom bill? Yes. Where the Democrats thought it was a really good idea that little boys could go in little girls' rooms. Sure. And somehow and transvestites and the transsexuals. And everybody could use the same bathroom. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> as as they, if somebody felt like a girl that day, yeah. they could go in the girls' room. Unisex bathrooms are good if there's one person at a time and the door can lock. Not yeah, not exactly. a public yeah. unisex bathroom. Yeah. That's I not agree. good. Yeah. Good so, idea. so anyway, <laughs> anyway, there was all kinds of stuff like that going last term. I mean, um, I hope the voters remember that. And uh, in the wake of that, um, I. I just got to that point where I'm very concerned that the government and has lost its moral authority to have the authority to actually take anybody's life. Mm -hmm. In other words, to, oh, to, to have yeah. the authority of the state have the authority to take somebody's life, it has to be based on a certain moral foundation. And if that foundation is gone, and it seems like it's pretty close to that point, mm -hmm. maybe it's not so wise to allow it to have any ability to do that. That's right. why I have both yeah. the death penalty for everyone or for no one, because yeah. I, I believe in that philosophy as well. It's a very scary proposition that the government can kill someone, but there are times when you see somebody that's, that, that has committed a heinous crime that does no longer deserve to breathe the same air that we breathe. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not sure I disagree with it. And I, I've never, it was, like, it was like up until last term, I'd always voted uh, against repeal mm -hmm. for that same reason. It's just, it's biblical too. I mean, the, the, you know. See, see, I vehemently oppose the death penalty for the reason that, um, see, if, the, if it were a perfect system, if the system were perfect, I would probably be okay with it because I think the punishment should fit the crime. And if you come into murder, well, then maybe you're one we don't need. But it's not a perfect system, and the, the problem I have is if you, once you admit that it's not a perfect system and that some people are convicted of murder who we find out later are not guilty, and some people are convicted of murder who we find out after they've been executed, it turns out they may not have been guilty because of recanted testimony or DNA evidence or whatnot, then once you've admitted that and conceded that, then I think there's a, a self-contradiction in the pro-death penalty viewpoint itself because it's like on the one hand you're saying you value the sanctity of human life so much mm -hmm. that you believe that anyone that violates that sanctity deserves to have their own life taken and yet you somehow at the same time aren't valuing the sanctity of life enough to be concerned that sometimes the state takes the life of someone who it turns out wasn't actually guilty. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's a self-contradiction there. I heard um, a, a conservative once um, make the argument that that uh, it's actually more conservative to be opposed to the death penalty because if you're a true conservative, then part of what's endemic in your belief system is that government's bad, government is ineffective, government screws up everything it touches, and right? And not to be trusted. Right, exactly. So why, as a conservative, would you trust the government with this one really, really important responsibility when it screws up everything else? Mm -hmm. At least if you lock somebody up for life, well, if at some point you figure out they're not really guilty, you can't give them back the time you've lost. Right, it's a deep but at least they're not struggle. dead. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's a deep philosophical struggle, and it's something that each person has to come to terms with on their own. Yeah. You know, the thing that I find uh, sort of, I guess, ironic or um, hypocritical are the folks that uh, b support abortion, but they don't support the death penalty. Mm -hmm. So take the life of the innocent, but don't take the life of the guilty. <laughs> but there's a difference between, and Gary's, <laughs> Gary's heard me say this, those of us who are pro-choice as I am, right? I, th there's a difference between being uh, pro-choice and pro-abortion, because those who are those who are pro-life like to call us pro-abortion, or like I don't. I don't. I call you Satan. Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, thing. I do have. I do have horns. You can't see them under my hair. That's why. But um, <laughs> but there's a difference. <laughs> like I'm pro-choice. I'm not pro-abortion. I don't encourage anyone to have an abortion. I just don't think making abortion illegal is the way that you're going to eliminate it in this country. Well, I, I agree. You're not going to eliminate it, but there there also has to be some restrictions on it. You, you can't mm -hmm. use it like birth control. Oh, I agree. A, after, after, you know, there, there, I, I believe that there's a couple philosophies, you know, yeah. um, I, life begins at conception, life begins when it's, uh, you know, viability. There's, there, but there's that gray area in the beginning. And, mm -hmm. and once you get past a certain point, there is no more gray area. You know exactly what's happening there. Oh, that I agree and, with. Absolutely. And, yeah. You know, um, well, you know, you know, it's funny because, you know, you, you and I are into politics is, uh, I was thinking. Well, about I'm not into politics. Well, you know, <laughs> well you, yeah. Wh whether you whether you like it or not, you are. But the um, there's a lady who wants to run for state rep from where, and she says she's pro life. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about that the other day. She's a really nice lady. And the problem is she's like Matt. She's pro life, uh, pro choice. I'm sorry, pro choice. But believes that. Um, uh, teenagers should still get permission before an abortion. Mm -hmm. Which you you agree with that? I do. Okay, I do. Well, if my daughter has to get permission to pierce her ears, right? Exactly. Shouldn't, shouldn't she at least have to notify me or the doctor notify well, sure, me that right. they, you know? But but anyway, I agree, yeah. but but I'm just I was thinking how funny that is is because because she has that moderate basically most people have that view. Mm -hmm. She would not be supported by the pro life people because she's not pro life enough. And she wouldn't be supported by the pro-choice people because she's definitely not pro-choice enough. Right. So that's she true. falls into the middle where you get no support whatsoever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's why I'm an independent. I don't fit in either but I, party. But it's, it's it's really true. I mean, yeah. it's it's like um, it's like the, the gun people in May. I mean, I I they came to me last term and said, "Hey, I need you to adjust this this gun bill." It was in Fish and Game, and it was Democrats in charge then. And they wanted me to make it legal for anybody to have a gun in their vehicle no matter what. Eliminate any restriction. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't get my brain wrapped around the idea of a 30-odd six pointed out the window <laughs> with, a, with a round in the chamber. Mm -hmm. You know, driving down the road. Right. Yeah. Okay? I just, it just, I, I, because <laughs> there's a difference. I mean, if, if a constituent calls you and says, I want you to do, do to vote for this, that's fine. But when I, when I um, vote for something, if I press that green button for something, there's a moral responsibility you have. Mm -hmm. I agree. And as pro-Second Amendment as I am, I, f I compromise. I say, okay, I know what you want. What I'll give you is I amended it so that it would be we would define a loaded firearms, a, a firearm with a round in the chamber so that it would still be accessible for self-defense. Right but couldn't inadvertently go off and harm anybody. That wasn't good enough. Really? They actually attacked me in the next election as being anti-gun. <laughs> wow. And they, and, and they approached me because I was the most pro-gun guy on the committee. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Which so there's, it, it's funny. Yeah. You know, once you start, you know, you moderate any of those extremes, all of a sudden you lose support and support from uh, groups and you... I don't count Gain on the groups. ire of others, huh? Yeah. I don't count on groups. No, you can't. I, I count on people that I meet at the door. Right. Yeah. Now, for Senate, that's harder because it's a lot of money. It doesn't cost anything to knock on someone's door. No, it doesn't cost anything to knock on someone's door, but with that many 50,000 people, you'd have to, that's a lot of knocking. I'm knocking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got four, four and a half, five months. Huh? Yeah. Four and a half, five months of knocking. Yeah. Yeah. Phone calls. I I've got a lot of volunteers that help me, a lot of grassroots support. Good. Good. So, 
Door to door, lit drops, phone calls, signs, not well, a problem. Lit signs and lit drops, that's still money. Yeah. What's a lit, a lit drop? Lit drop is when you take things like this and you go and put it in people's. Uh, oh, you literature drop. Paper to okay. It. You take your piece of mail and you drop it at the door personally oh, instead okay. of putting it in the mail. See, at first I was concerned. I thought lit, I'm thinking you're lighting something on fire mm -hmm. and, and dropping it somewhere. That's down south. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it's a little cool. different down there. Yeah, a lot different. Do you mean down south as in down south, or you mean the southern half of uh, New Hampshire, like the, well, not yeah. southern half, but like One or the, the other. Like, like, like Not that particular. Oh, but okay. it, it, yeah. do, it does take money to run a campaign, so mm -hmm. I am soliciting donations. Yeah, because yeah. I, I was looking into running against Odell, who's kind of one of those kind of wishy-washy senators who, and uh, he's a nice guy. Don't know him. And uh, he's a nice guy. He's, um... Bob Odell? Yeah. He, you know, a, a very friendly, really nice guy, and he's got fifty thousand dollars sitting there. Mm. And the district is where, all the way to Claremont, and then up oh. north to. Uh, you can't do it door to door. Wow, no, wow. No, too spread out. There is, there's not a, a snowball's chance in heck of actually accomplishing that door to door. Yeah. So I, I've been looking to try to find money, and I'm Money's not. Tight. I didn't, I didn't vote mm. the right way and right to work. <laughs> <laughs> so I get that people that won't support me. Yeah. You know, and I didn't vote the right way on this or that, so. Well, it depends on what you mean by voted the right way. If you're able to live with yourself, you voted the right way. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I vote on the things that I believe in, and if people disagree with it, then they need to call before I vote, and they do, and yeah. that's, that's what I look at. So um, I, I believe, obviously, we got elected because people agree with the philosophies that we have. The, obviously, you're not going to be 100% with everybody. No, um, the only one agrees with you 100% is yourself. Well, I don't even agree with myself 100% all the time. That can get confusing. No, it's, you know, there's times where you have to rethink something. Yep. You're, yeah. not, you're not going to be 100% right all the time, and you have to recognize that. You know, people make mistakes or, you know, they're not perfect, they're fallible. That's just life. So yeah. you, you voted your way on right to work, and <laughs> we we all voted the other way. I like how he said, said that. Said yeah, that. you yeah, voted like your that. way. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't I don't vote on anything hoping to get some support from some group or money from someone. Yeah, that's you can't. And, and I don't, I don't vote yeah. I, I don't vote to keep a record that somebody's going to look at and go, oh, let's not reelect him or let's work against him. I vote for what I think are, are the things that the the folks in my neighborhood and my district want to see done. Yeah. and if they're not happy with it, they. They call and they let you know, and I get a lot of calls about what people would like to see and not like to see, and yeah, that's that's where I go because I'm there to represent. I'm not there to push my own agenda. So right, right. right. That's what I think the job. So is what other, what about. other uh, things did you uh, are you going to forward when you get up there? Because there's there's a difference between what people will vote for and what they actually push for. Yeah. Well, I I only sponsored a few bills, and that uh, the death penalty was one of them. The other one was uh, a change in the the liability for dog bites for uh, cities and towns, the way that it used to be structured. It's basically personal responsibility was what, I was, was what I was after. The way the law was structured that if your dog bit me and you couldn't pay me, I could sue the town and the town would have to pay me. Really? How does that work? That, that's, well, because it was a law from the 1800s that if, <laughs> that if your dog uh. ate my chicken and you couldn't pay for my chicken, the yeah. town would have to pay me for my chicken because they let you have the dog. Interesting. So <laughs> I, that that was that was my my uh, my, my first bill. Uh, this, the death how, penalty how did ones. That go? It passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's law. So the, now if your dog bites me, you're responsible. Good. Good. Um, that, that's that's really the way that I approach things. You know, government is, like you said, it's 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 its own thing, and it's not necessarily the greatest in every circumstance. It, it needs to be limited, and yeah. as long as your rights are your rights, and they're not infringing on mine, it's none of my business. Right. That's 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 the approach I take. So you're you're in favor of um, uh, gambling. I don't gamble, but if people want to, that's their oh, choice. I know, but if I'm the, saying if if the uh, if in other words if the if the a good casino, gambling bill came up. Bill, did you vote for that? Uh, I actually wasn't there that day. Okay. That the casino bill came up. Um, but but the way that it the way that it was structured to to make it a monopoly for only one or two. I probably wouldn't have supported that. Mm -hmm. It needs if you're going to have gambling, it's gambling, and, and why should you mm -hmm. only have the monopoly on one location or mm -hmm. two locations if you're going to and then what does that do for my town what does that do for my district if all the gambling is either up in the north country or down by the border who's then coming to manchester yeah match vegas right yeah. <laughs> even. that was part of your objection wasn't it didn't, that's didn't part you? it's unconstitutional yeah. just by virtue of that yeah because article 10 of the new hampshire constitution strictly says that you, uh, government is not for the purpose of uh I forget what the ameliorating. What the heck is that word? 
But anyway, it is not for the benefit of one group or per, uh, group of people, and therefore, under that particular bill, you would be issuing four fifty million dollar licenses, and so there would be only a certain class or group of people capable of acquiring those licenses. So government mm -hmm. would be, in effect, being used to uh, benefit those groups. And why would we want to limit ourselves? Why not anybody who can come up with fifty million dollars can buy a license? That goes a long way. Right. Even, even then, I still think you're talking s uh, such a narrow uh, percentage yeah. of the population that it, it would ha I, I, I could see constitutionally it does, it, a, it's, a thousand It's, it's a moot point uh, at this point because that, that issue has come and gone. Massachusetts will, will have again. a... Now, Massachusetts will have a, a casino up before we even get yeah, anywhere so. close to having another one. And at that point, it would be sort of pointless to build one here because... The other one would be so close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know I know uh, Dallas Sanders obviously in favor of that. Sure. Uh, John's in favor of that, and you're just you're just kind of it's not your issue, but John you don't. Michael? Well, I'm yeah. I, I'm in favor of it, but I you know I'm not going to sponsor a bill on it, and I'm not going to spend my time and energy working to get gambling. Right. I don't have an issue with it if somebody else wants to work on it. Yeah. More power to them. Right. It doesn't right. it? It's not something that I concern myself with. I don't gamble, but if other people want to, they can. Yeah. They can go down to Foxwoods. They can go online. They can go buy lottery tickets. That's gambling. Yeah. Right. It is. So yeah. gambling gambling's not necessarily my big issue. Your, your cup of tea. Well, the economy is the big one right now. I mean, people mm -hmm. are having a hard time paying their bills, putting food on the table, gas is mm. through the roof. We've got to come up with some serious answers in this state and you know there's a lot of things that we can do to, to self-sustain ourselves I mean the, where's the family farm gone that's almost a thing of the past now all those farms have been developed into you know housing and yeah. w we need to get back to some sa some self-sustainability around here and we could do it but See, speaking of self-sustainability yeah. what was your uh, uh, take on the northern pass uh, if it's going to be taking people's property through eminent domain for some private business I ain't supportive of that even though it's infrastructure yeah but for who for Canada and for Massachusetts, I think that was the plan: is to get the to get the the, the energy from Quebec to Massachusetts, Montreal, where, yeah. where most of the people use the electricity. So we're basically we're just uh, you know in their way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's kind of the kind of the way I saw it. Only um, I didn't have a problem with using eminent domain for infrastructure. Mm, if it was eminent domain for. I mean, like a government words, purpose for the benefit of the folks of New Hampshire. Right. Well, I probably would still have a problem with it, but not as much as right. what I have right now. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, it's, uh, yeah, it, that, that's exactly kind of the way I looked at it because I didn't have a problem with the infrastructure using a mint domain for infrastructure. However, the fact that it was just going to be uh, all that energy was going to be uh, dropped into a pool that we didn't necessarily gain anything from. Right. Nor would it necessarily even drop our energy costs and or electrical costs or anything else. It seemed like, okay, so we're going to uproot a whole bunch of people up, you know. Sure. So is that dead at this point? Currently, I think it is, yeah. Really? Oh, good. It's not, it's, it's not on my radar. I haven't seen anything that worries me that it's going to be coming anytime soon. So I think yeah. it's been stalled, and I'm sure it'll come back again next year. And, yeah. You know, the thing uh, that, that I think is a bigger issue is the Reggie. Right. Why, are we, why uh, regional greenhouse gas initiative? It's basically kind of like the local cap and trade. Okay, I was going to say I'm not too familiar. I've heard the term, but I'm not too familiar with what. It's, it's what a fund is. that the state of New Hampshire pays into, but we don't take any money out of. And why is that? What is right. what is the fund for, or what uh, what is it supposed to be? Well, for? the fund is for offsetting greenhouse gases for global warming and all and all sure. those things. But then when you want to use the funds for some environmental project, for some reason they won't dole out the funds. Really? So why would we keep paying into the fund if we're not getting any money back? Right, right. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's one of Odell's uh, things that he is in favor of. But it's not something people understand enough to use as a sledgehammer to beat him. So. Well, good example. We wanted to build a solar array over on the Dunbarton landfill. We wanted to use Reggie funds. The past legislature, which was controlled by uh, the other party, uh, block, <laughs> blocked us. The environmentalists blocked us for putting up a solar panel array because we wanted to use the Reggie funds. The Reggie fund is some sacred cow for some reason that I don't understand. So, so does it does it get used for anything? Does uh, anyone get access to the money, or does it just? I, I think it's it, well since it's a regional thing. I'm sure Vermont and 
Maine or Massachusetts and can I, you know I'm sure they're probably accessing it but for some reason I haven't seen a whole lot of activity huh. uh, in, in New Hampshire on it okay. I, haven't, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time and energy on it but that's that's another issue because that's an environmental thing that we're paying into and we're not getting any benefit from yeah those are the things that I see wrong with our state government that we do these things because they're feel good or because it's politically um, sound correct. or correct Right. And what does it co accomplish? It doesn't accomplish anything. It costs actually higher rates in electricity, and it doesn't benefit the, the, creates the state. A bigger problem it creates it a solves. bigger problem than it solves. It doesn't benefit the state. So what's the purpose of it? Right. Get rid of it. Keep yeah. the, keep no, the money. I, I, reduce we, taxes. I, th I forget when we voted in, in uh, voted ourselves into this. Uh, you were in the minority when that happened. I was. It was the, 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 the if, you were, if you were in the House, you must have been in the minority one. That would have been 07, because I remember yeah. voting against it. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. But it was It was not a, it wasn't one of the ones we were going to win, because we were just so profoundly outnumbered. But now, we, we tried to repeal that, and the Senate killed the repeal. They did. So I don't know why. But my, another, another thing I'd like to do from the Senate is to work a little bit more closely with the House. You see the disconnect we have currently with the Senate. It's, it's almost to the point of childish. Well, it is to the point of childish. Really? Yeah, they, they wouldn't hear our f bills, so we're putting their bills on the table. It just sounds... We have control of the legislature. We don't have control of the governor's office, but for some reason we're not working together well enough as we should be. And I think that's something that's that's causing us uh, a little bit of trouble. We could be making greater strides in, in fixing what's wrong with state government if we worked a little closely together. And I, mm -hmm. I think I would be able to do that from the Senate because it just seems common sense. Why well, you? yeah. Well, it's you have the the House, which is pretty conservative right now, and then you have the the uh, Senate, which is uh, a lot more moderate. And so they're playing games and stuff like that. They're not passing a lot of stuff. I know all the gun bills, they laid those. See, what, well, it is an election year. It is, I know. Well, See, I'm not worried about an election year. Yeah. If they want you, they want you. Right. Yeah. If they don't, <laughs> you've right. sold yourself out to maybe get reelected. Right. Well, then I'm not selling my, that's do. why I said I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. Right, right. I'm not there to do what other people want because that's what their lobbyists or their, pay, or their, you know, their paid staff want you to do. I'm going to do what the people in the district want you to do. So this, the Senate has a unique way of uh, kill, uh, killing bills. Instead of voting to kill a bill, which is what we tend to do in the House, they'll lay it on the table, and then at the end of the session, anything on the table, they vote to, uh, you know, have it disposed of. Okay. I don't know what the actual parliamentary uh, maneuver is, but in, a, in effect, they take everything out uh, on the table and, and burn it outside. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... So anyway, what else would you like to cover before we run out of time? Whatever. I'm just. What, do you do, what did you do for real work before you started getting involved in politics? Uh, well, my real work, I, I'm a seal coat distributor. I sell uh, the seal products. Coats? Not seals coats. No. I was going to say, how hideous. That's pretty awesome. It's, oh, it's I think, really? Oh, Basically, uh, <laughs> pavement maintenance supplies. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So for the folks that, that, I that seal, that seal really their cool. driveway. Yeah. I yeah. sell the stuff to the contractors that do like shopping malls and plazas oh, okay, and, okay. and, and yeah, things yeah. like that, road surfacing. Jeez, I thought my so. idea was a lot better than that. And it's seasonal, so I have the winners to be able to be involved in politics. Oh, yeah. So that's by the right. time we're winding down oh. um, with our house session, my business season picks up and then we're off for the summer. Oh, that works out well. By the, time <laughs> it, by the time my season winds down, political season heats back up again. So. Yeah. Now, if you're running for office, though, that's going to be yours. You it's going to be all summer, a lot of hours. Yeah. <laughs> I sense you're ready for it. I, you know, when I campaign, I go out all day, every day, knocking on doors. Yeah. And I don't, I, I knock on everybody's door that I know that's going to come out and vote. If you're coming out and you're voting, I'm going to talk to you because I want to know what your interests are, what issues you believe need to be worked on, so that I am prepared to be able to deal with those things. I'm not just going to knock on doors of Republicans. Right. I'm not right. going to, you know, I want to knock on everybody's door. I want to talk right. to the Democrats that are going to come out and vote because if you get to represent them, you've got to know what issues are important to them. Yeah. I'm not going to ignore them. They're constituents and they're folks that pay the taxes. They might have a different philosophy on some things, but I believe that for the most part, everyone in the state has a general idea of where they'd like to see the state go. There's some disagreement as to how to get there, but I think that's probably, you know, the, the better part of the job is figuring out how to get everybody to get there together. 
Right, and some of those Democrats may vote for you just by virtue of you actually knocking on their door and having a conversation with them. I would hope so. Yeah. What is your, um, how is your what's your opinion on some of the? Uh, uh, we've done we did a show on. Uh, I'm trying to figure out which to cover. F uh, one is privacy. Mm -hmm. You know, Representative Kirk. Oh yeah. His big issue is privacy. Uh, he had a, a bill. We had him on the show talking about um, real ID and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Are you are you uh, likewise concerned about intrusions on people's liberty via privacy? Definitely. We actually had an issue come up last night at the Board of Aldermen for uh, secondhand dealers and pawn shops. The police proposed an ordinance that anybody that frequented those establishments to, to sell goods, basically, they, were, and they have good intentions in trying to do this, but I think the approach is a little off. Um, they want to be able to obviously catch people that are stealing stuff and, and then pawning them. So they're, they're adding these regulations to the ordinance that when you come in and you pawn something, I'm going to write up the ticket, obviously, and now I'm going to enter it in the computer and it's going to go on an internet database. I'm right. also going to take your picture and put that on the database. And uh, mm. I'm not necessarily faithful enough in the internet to believe that all that information is going to stay private. Right. Um, so I, for me, it was an issue of, of privacy. Right. Why are you cataloging people that are good to be able to catch the few that are bad? Mm -hmm. right, so right. I'm definitely big on privacy rights. Good, because it's, it's uh, you know who we had on uh, to talk about that was Claire Ebel. Yep. Oh, yes. ACLU. Yeah. ACLU. And uh, she pointed out something that was, uh, I had never given it any thought, but basically she said that we've reached a point in time where especially kids in college are so accustomed to relinquishing their own privacy mm -hmm. via Facebook sure, or yeah. whatever else. They volunteer it up. That yeah. they don't even understand what they're giving up when they, you know, you end up with cameras all over the place. And like you said, you know, they want to keep this information online or, or that information online. It's, it's, it's not good. No. Uh, the government having that kind of database is not uh, helpful because they've been, uh, yeah. So no, that's good to hear. I don't support cataloging people that yeah. haven't done anything wrong. You know, to, to try to catch a few people that have done bad things, everyone else has to now sacrifice their their privacy, and I, I just didn't support that, so I voted against it. Yeah, good. Very good. Um, I think we're running out of time. Um, Phil, what? What? My grandson <laughs> wants to say something. you got two seconds. What? What is no, it? You're definitely not anti-gun. You definitely aren't anti-gun. What do I do with you out back of the house? You teach me to shoot. Is yeah. that anti-gun? <laughs> I would say not. No, he's got a point. He's, he's right. I'm glad. I knew I had you on here for something. <laughs> That's so, good. You're teaching, uh, you're teaching him to be a responsible well, gun Well, yeah, but yes. the Cub Scouts went there with uh, the other grandson, the, the six-year-old, and the, and the, the uh, police officer in Manchester says, well, don't even touch a gun, never touch a gun. And my grandson, Scott, he says, well, my grandfather lets us shoot all the time. Oh, well, actually, that's how I learned to shoot, too, he said. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that's actually a more appropriate way to keep kids from actually hurting themselves with guns is get them familiar with them so they know gun yeah. safety. The problems that you have are the kids that have never been exposed to a gun, and then they find one, and they think it's a toy, or right. they're just so curious about no it, they wind, up, they, they wind up shooting their friend or themselves. Mm -hmm. and. You know, you need to start them at an early age to be able to respect that it, it could take your life or your friend's life. And exactly. Yeah. I think it's a more responsible approach to be able to get them more accustomed to them rather than prohibit them from being anywhere near them. It, just, it, makes, yeah. it makes it something attractive to them at that point. If I can't touch it, I can't wait till Dad's not around so I can get right. my hands on that gun and see what it does. Exactly. So anyway, uh, this Saturday, May 5th, uh, Walk for Life is uh, going to benefit the uh, uh, care net. Um, Veterans Memorial Park, uh, registration's at 9.30, the walkathon's at 10.50, 15. I hope you show up. Phil, thank you very much, and, and good luck with your, your endeavor, young yeah, man. Thanks, thank Phil. You. Thanks. Have a good night. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.